we're here again on another week of The Motive. Um, I'm joined today with Amy. Welcome, Amy. Thank you. So, Amy, you're a business owner and a life coach. Yes. Yeah, so do you know what? Actually, before we start, one thing I did want to do is say thank you for coming down here today. You've um, you've driven like two and a half hours to yes. uh, be here, so I'm very, very honoured. So thank, thank you. Thank you for having me on as well. Yeah, thank you. So, so Amy, um, what I'd like to do is like start at the beginning and work our way through your journey because you've got a very interesting story yeah. from what I've seen so far, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to kind of delving okay. into it and understanding it a bit more. Okay. So I think I'll probably start off with talking about my son, Ben, because I am a mum. So Ben is now 18, but he was born with a rare brain condition called a poor emphatic cyst, which sounds a little bit confusing because it's not actually a cyst. It's like a hole in his brain. And it was a large cyst, uh, like 40 percent of the right side of his brain, left side of his brain. Yeah, yeah. So quite a big hole. Um, at seven months old, he was. we were kind of told that he wouldn't walk or talk. Um, so it was kind of an unknown journey, if you like, because it was a rare condition. Um, I was married at the time. Um, ben does walk and talk. How, how was it? Um, what was it like finding that news out? Um, well, he was diagnosed at seven months old. Right. So it wasn't from birth. And the only reason... It was a kind of like a paranoid mum moment, if you like. Um, you get the health visitor come round and they've got milestones of sitting up and doing certain things. And when he got to, got to seven months old, I just kind of... It was his, his right arm, basically. He wasn't moving. It didn't look like it was moving. Those the were the symptoms, were they? Yeah, the, right. and it was just one of those things where I sat at the health visitor one day and I said, I think there's something wrong. And she was like, we'll go and get it checked out then. We took him to the GP... And they did um, the reflex test on, that you do on your knee. Yes. Straight away, there was no reflex on his right knee. On his right knee. Mm. So it wasn't just the right arm then. No, it yeah, ended it up. The, it was the, the leg whole, as well. It was the leg as well, yeah. so the whole of the right yeah. side. And they didn't say anything at the time. The GP walked out of the room, said, I'll be back in a minute. And then she said, come back. And she says, can you go to the hospital? We need to give him, like, um, we need him to see a doctor. And... We walked into the children's bit at the hospital and they were like, oh, we think he's had a stroke. So I'm sitting there thinking, stroke. Yeah, such a young age. And I'm like, I couldn't comprehend that. Anyway, the next thing you know, we're going to get him in for an MRI. So they had to put him to sleep. And when we're walking into the MRI, the nurse said to me, oh, it'll be about 10 days before you get the results. But when we came out of the MRI, she says, we'll get the consultant to see you now. So instantly I was like, right, okay there is something wrong yeah. and they took me into him and it was like it's a poor emphatic cyst I'm like what uh, um, right okay it's going to cause him to have cerebral palsy right okay and what's this sorry what was it called um, so it's a poor emphatic cyst poor emphatic cyst yeah right. um, which would re- lead to right side hemiplegia which is cerebral palsy right and because there was like if, when I googled it which you shouldn't do with a health thing there weren't many what? statistics to go off. What? Why shouldn't? Why? Why is you shouldn't? Because use? it was because it is so rare. There wasn't any statistics really that gave any hope, if that makes sense. There wasn't anybody over a certain age. So there's lots of like negativity. Lots on there, of negative. Like... Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was quite lucky because we had a, then we had a full team. All of a sudden. It was like physiotherapists, OTs, uh, paediatricians, neurologists. And it was quite a difficult journey because when some when a baby's that young, it was like, right, we're going to find out what health problems he's got as we get older because we can't test his hearing right now. We can't test his eyesight. We don't, it's going to be like a journey. So we're going to step in at this point, at this age and test his eyes, this point for his ears. And so it was very overwhelming to go from all of a sudden having a seven-month-old baby that, you know, you kind of thought was, and I hate the word, normal, having a normal journey to all of a sudden this kind of label. This whole new world kind of opening up. and And nobody really that I could relate to because there was nobody. Well, it wasn't a common... It wasn't wasn't a a common thing. thing. It was kind of... So 
it was a good thing in a way though because then I kind of sat there and thought okay they've said he might not walk and talk there are no statistics on this they have said it's really rare so instead of kind of getting it that into that mindset of right okay we're gonna have to have wheelchairs and things like that I was like let's just see how it goes how, let's see how, what it's capable of how, how did that affect your relationship as well at the time um it was quite stressful because it's like you're grieving yeah. and that sounds really yeah, odd yeah yeah, it's, yeah but I can it's imagine that. yeah it's like you're grieving for a life that you thought somebody was going to have and now they're taking a different path and we're taking a different path and a path that we don't know what the outcome is going to be. And and you've got to try and process this yeah, all and at the same time. That was really difficult with all these new like health professionals coming in as well. I mean, luckily they were all fantastic and all lovely, but there were all these new people all of a sudden that was quite overwhelming. So so it sounds quite like there was a lot like there was a lot of people to help the situation. This, yes, like yeah. a lot of people being involved is you know, which is you know, right. not something you're you generally commonly hear like no it's like these things take years just to like try and find out so I mean it was really good that you had that level of support around you yeah yeah um the unfortunate thing was as Ben got older um we learned so he did have a problem with his eyes that he copes with extremely well obviously he did start walking he walks with a bit of a limp and he's got a splint on um what's wrong with his eye uh, so he's got no peripheral vision Oh really? Yeah. So it so he can only see forward. Oh wow. Uh, but he copes very well with that. But the epilepsy started when he was seven years old. That was probably the hardest thing to deal with because that's very scary. You know, epilepsy in anybody as an adult, but as a child, and he wasn't. It's not the kind of epilepsy as well where we get a signal. So that was quite hard to deal with to the point where it was getting. You know, he's, he'd go for months of that one and then he'd have 15 in one morning. And epilepsy yeah. is like a form of seizures, is yes, that right? Yes, yeah, so, yeah. And they would just ha- happen randomly, like... Happen randomly, so we it we got to a point where we just kept having different medication. It's that whole thing, we've got trial and error, trying different medication. The medication got, you know, put up. He was on that much medication. He'd stabilise for a little bit and then he'd get immune to it. Right, like build up a level of yeah, tolerance yeah, to it all. yeah, yeah. Um, so things kind of escalated. So in 2019, so I actually separated from my husband. And around that time, Ben's epilepsy started to get a little bit worse as well. Was there? A, was that all connected, the fact that your relationship um, ended? or No, they kind of put it down to hormones. They, the, they the all... The relationship? Oh, what? no, we kind of drifted apart Did over you? that right, time. Over a period so, of time. Yeah. Right. So it was, it was a scary moment. I'm thinking, right, okay, I've got a child to, to look after with, with problems, even though I've never seen them as problems. I've just kind of... You got on, yeah, got with on it. with it. But you're a single mother at single this point. Single mom, yeah. We've got to find a house. You know, that's, we've got to... You had to find the house. Yeah, find oh, the right, house. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. We had to move. Um, that's where things, like 2019, 2020, were think, where things really started to ramp up and things kind of got, not out of hand, but a lot of things that came to me that I didn't expect. Um, so... Like... Like what? So 2019, we separated. 2020, I'd sold the house quite quickly and um, found a house and was just going through like the completion stages, which took forever. And my stepdad was actually diagnosed with throat cancer two weeks before we were moving. So it was like, right, okay, I've got to make sure Ben's all right because he's moving house and we've had a separation. Stepdad's got cancer, is mum all right? So it was all kind of all up happening in the at air. once. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I moved in the house, and my stepdad had a very short battle of cancer and lasted five weeks, all in all. Wow, was it that? It was that quick. quick yeah. It was that quick. It must um, have been quite aggressive. Yes, cancer. Yeah. To be fair, yeah. yeah so, sorry to hear that. Yeah, it was quite difficult. It affected Ben quite a lot because he he was. A big figure in Ben's life. At that point, I wasn't driving. So if we ever needed to go to hospital, my stepdad would jump in and, and things like that. So Ben kind of suffered a little bit with that. He couldn't process it. Plus, he got the separation, moving house. Everything was kind of up in the air. 
Um, around that time, I did get into a, a new relationship as well, which was very turbulent from the off. At the time, I didn't realise that alcohol was a problem. I kind of got into this relationship. For you or for the other person? For the other person. Right, alcohol right. was a, a big problem. Um, suffering with PTSD, ex-military. Right. You know, a lot of emotional baggage. And at that time, I wasn't in the best place to kind of help somebody while I'm trying to... With all your other responsibilities, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. So it was very difficult at that point. Um, later on in 2020, I kind of got into the mindset of, as like, right, I need to... At the time, I was teaching people to sew. I got my own business teaching people to sew, which I absolutely loved. And it kept me going through the hard times. Um, 2000, the back end of 2019, I actually decided, right, I'm going to open up a high street shop. Nice. Yeah, it's going to sell fabric, punch. it's going to sell wool, and it was like, great. Mum was excited about this, it gave her focus, she's like, I can help in the shop. You know, everybody was excited. So, so, so you got, um, you've obviously got a bit of substance to yourself, because whilst you had all of this responsibility with your, your son, you've also got your own business, and then you're talking about taking added responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fair, fair yeah. play to you. So I thought, right, it's like I needed a bit of stability and people laugh at me because going out and setting up a business, especially a high street shop, is not stability by any means. But I did it, I had big dreams and it was absolutely great. Um, the January come round um, and we opened and actually at that point, Ben had a real big kind of episode of seizures at that point where we ended up in A&E. When he normally had seizures, he'd come out of them very quickly and be able to carry on. This morning, he had about 18 seizures, was being sick. What, one whole morning? Yeah, um, talking very confused. It was different. It was a different kind of seizure. So it was just kind of progressively getting worse yeah, over, yeah. A, over so a period of time. We took him to A&E. Obviously, they brought in the paediatricians that dealt with him anyway there because they were used to it. And... It was like a little bit that moment where they were the, you could see him scratching their heads because Ben was on so many tablets, 15 tablets a day. 15 tablets. And it was it got to the point where we can't give him any more. There's all the medication out there, but that's not going to sort this kind of seizure. And, and, and I, I suppose he, the reason why he was on 15 tablets is because what you said earlier, because he started he kept, building yeah, a tolerance. Yeah, he kept getting so, immune to it. So it was just like... Right, how okay. much can you really get increase it yeah, by? Yeah, like he's 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 not like at this time at this age he's like fifteen. So like how much drugs can you pump into a child? Yeah. yeah. And they were like, we're going to contact Birmingham Hospital. I was like, right, okay, okay. But before that, obviously, we went into COVID, and the shop kind of locked down, and Birmingham got put on the back burner because they were letting nobody in fortunately for me Ben's seizures had stabilized again because he'd go for a, a quite a long time before having any so luckily at that point um which was a blessing the seizures had become under control which is great so this the shop high street had shut down so how far were you into the shop before? 10 weeks. 10 weeks, <laughs> yeah, yeah, 10 yeah. weeks. Yeah, 10 weeks. It's, yeah, we're opening. Oh, I'm sorry, we're, we're having we're to close. Yeah. So, so you're dealing with uh, a partner that's got addictive traits and PTSD. Yeah. You've got the responsibility of your son. Yeah. And running a business. Like yeah. how, how did you, how were you mentally through that, that period of time? Because that can cause a lot of people just to have a pretty much a breakdown there. Yeah. With all of these kind of things coming in all different directions. To be honest, at that point, I was able to kind of switch, I call them hats, as in different responsibilities, quite well. Right, okay. And at that point, you know, it sounds ridiculous, but at that point, you know, because I've got so much going on, it's like I didn't have time to think. About yourself. About, oh my God, everything's gone wrong. Mm. It was like, okay, that's not ideal, but I need to think of this now. It's not a great way to be, by the way, because in future, like last year, that that all came to a head. But at, the, at that point, I think I got that much different things to focus on. I didn't have time to worry. Yeah. 
if yeah. that makes sense. Yes, I'd got, I've not been looking after myself, but at mm. that time it was like I was running on pure adrenaline. But sometimes, you know, that can be a, a better way with dealing with life's issues by just getting yeah. on with it rather than, you know, sitting there and, and having that kind of like, all that worry, all of this procrastination because yeah. that doesn't yeah, yeah. always help us. So, so the shop got closed down after 10 weeks mm -hmm. and Ben was stabilizing though. You ben was stabilized, yeah. Um, so, th so pretty much 2020 was basically me running around going, oh my God, we need to get a website done. Selling meters and meters of elastic because people were just making face masks like you wouldn't believe. So k did it actually... Did, were you still doing business? Um, I was still doing business. I'd gone from teaching people face to face with having to record videos to go on YouTube, which is completely alien to me because I'm used to talking to people face to face and all of a sudden I'm talking to a screen and nobody's talking back at me. That I found hard. So everything was kind of ticking along. Um, we was doing well. The website was building I was learning about email lists that I never even had to think about before social media like I kind of had to up my game very quickly did you learn this from anywhere in particular um so did... I'd signed up to actually um, um mentor a coach at the time when I opened the shop Paul Moore right yeah yes. so luckily and for anyone that doesn't know Paul Moore is like a a life coach, business coach. So he's a coach. He's two times master coach of the year. Right. So yeah, luckily I, I've got good backing. So it was all about, right, you've got to do social media. You've got to be consistent. You've got to do the email marketing. You've got to do this. And, that. and I look back th at that time now, it's a bit blurry, but I'm thankful for that time. Because if I didn't have that, I would have been sat watching the news. Right, right. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you needed to put your mind into something. And, and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that yeah. because I think a lot of people struggled yeah. during um, those times. Yeah, I, I, it gave me something to focus on. So I didn't see that as a as a bad thing. Um, you know, it got a little bit frustrating with all the different restrictions. Like when the shops were open, there were, people weren't allowed to stand like, so many metres apart or things like that. But... The majority of it, I'm, I'm like really grateful for. Um, in the October 2020, that's when Birmingham said, right, we need to get Ben in. We need to wipe, take him off his meds for seven days. We're going to wind him up to a EEG. We're going to wind him up to all videos. So, so even though the seizures were yeah, they'd stop. They needed to get in. He was fastly approaching the age where Birmingham Children's Hospital couldn't help. Right, okay. Because he was getting to like okay. 16 and if they were going to do anything, they've got a cut off period. So it was like, right, we need him in. Would there not have been help after that from anyone else? or? Um, Birmingham Children's Hospital actually specialise in epilepsy right. with children. So it was like, we need to see him. Um, so at that time, of course, COVID was still a thing. You know, 2020, it was... Yeah, it was a nightmare for it hospitals. It was a nightmare, well. yeah. So we had to have seven days. He had to go in there for all the PCR tests, all face masks. Once we was in the hospital, nobody could go walking around, so you literally stood there. And the idea was to take him off his meds to see. They needed to see where the brain activity, what part of the brain was causing the seizures. And we get there, and so he was allowed to have his medication on the Monday morning. And we get there and there's a ward with about four children in and they've been there for like 10 days off the medications and not having seizures. So I'm instantly going, all right, we're going to be here for a while, mate. Well, we better get comfy. Um, you seem quite level-headed while we're... Um, yeah, I, to be honest, it was one of those things because I'd not seen him since he was seven years old without medication. So I, I was completely unaware. Like I got no kind of expectations of what was going to happen with yeah. this and all I kept thinking is we're in the right place we're in the right place at this point you know Ben is getting really upset by seizures he could cope with his disability but is it was his epilepsy because he couldn't tell when it was going to come in on or control it that's what worried him so he was like right okay this is a chance for me to get this sorted so he'd gone on it with a great mindset and I'm sitting there feeling oh my god I don't know what's going to happen Luckily, um, so they he'd not had any medication the Monday night. 
and on the Tuesday morning, he was that reactive to not having medication that he started fitting on the Tuesday morning. Really? That yeah, quickly? Yeah, that quickly. I mean, the other parents are going, that's not fair. We've been here 10 days and we're still waiting. Um, on the Thursday, he'd had numerous seizures. On the Thursday, he had the biggest seizure that he'd ever had. And they were like, right, we're going to put him back on his medication. We've got everything that we need. And, of course, I, right, we need to send this off to the consultants. They'll be in touch with you in an appointment and they will decide what we can do, what we're doing. But we've got everything. We, we've tracked everything. So it's like, right, OK. And I'm thinking they've got to do something because I can't see him do that before. Like, again, that, that last seizure, I literally ended up in tears thinking they need to get this sorted. They've got to help him. So, of course, COVID kind of still kind of, well, they, 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 they did say we can't, we can't see for about a year because of COVID, we have that much of a backlog. You know, it's going to be about a year before we can even see you. So at that point, it was like, right, okay, that's our next step. We've got to wait a year. It's absolutely and fine. Yeah, yeah we can do year. this. We yeah. can do this. Even if you have seizures, we know we've got a next step. There's somebody that, that think they can help. So we're not to feel down about this. You know, it, it's we've got an answer. Hopefully they've got an answer. And you guys have persevered like so long already. So it, yeah. it was obviously yeah. quite resilient to yeah. what was happening. Absolutely. So we kind of ended 2020 on quite a hopeful note, you know. Um, everything, business-wise, everything was going all right. I'd learned to ton load of new things that I didn't know I could do before regarding technology and we got an answer from Birmingham that they they might be able to help so it was fine um 2021 um arrived so we'd got me and my partner got engaged we'd arranged, arranged a wedding everything was going fine he'd sorted the alcohol out and the PTSD oh, wow so yeah 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 so. big step so everything was going well um they, we went back to Birmingham. They were like, we want to operate. So that was early 2021. Which was good news. Which was good news. It was time. good news. It was a scary moment because they were like, we've got this um, operation we can do where we want to remove the other 10% of that half of the brain because the, the activity is bouncing and clashing where that hole is. And this is a major operation. It's a 10-hour operation. Um, obviously, it carries risks of, like, clots, death, um, the, the brain filling up with fluid. Um, do, do they fill it with any? Like, no, how does that, they no. Just, they just, they just, just take, take a piece of the brain out? They take it out, yeah. Um, it was one of those things as where they aren't, but we're, there's an 85% success rate with this. So, right, so okay. it's either live with all of the seizures yeah. and all yeah. of the issues that he's yeah. experiencing yeah. Yeah. Or, or go for this treatment yeah. with an 85% success yeah. rate. At that point, they were like, he's going to be in hospital for six weeks and it's going to take him about 12 months to walk. And you had to obviously make this decision. We made the decision together yeah, with Ben enough. because, you know, at, I didn't feel like he, well, I felt like he needed to make the decision. Yeah. I was yeah, like, this is your life. Yeah. Like. <sighs> Which is a challenging situation because you're his legal yeah, guardian yeah. At, at that time. But I'm thinking time. it's not me that's got this life ahead of me with these seizures. Mm. Like, you know, I was there to help him with the choice. I didn't just leave the choice to him, but I was like, I want you to tell me first what you want. Yeah. And then I'll tell you what I think, but you need to tell me first. And it so happens you both wanted the we same thing. We both wanted it. Right. Um, yeah, there was a long wait. So that was early 2021. We didn't have the operation till October. With uh, kind of in that time, obviously we'd planned the wedding for early October. So I'm like, this is fine because Ben, we don't know how long Ben's going to be in hospital for. It's absolutely fine. We can get married and... You know, then we can concentrate on Ben. At this point, Mum had started acting very odd. And... Uh, in what ways? So it was more... So she'd always been forgetful. But Mum had always been like a happy-go-lucky kind of person. And all of a sudden we saw these moods 
and the only way I could describe him is she's literally laughing and nobody knows what she's laughing at and then she's crying one minute and she doesn't know what she's crying for. Oh, it's a bit like, bipolar. Yeah, now I'm getting to the point. That you know when you know when there's something wrong but you try and find excuses for it? It's like, oh, we've been in lockdown. It, it, that, that's, a, that's a hard balance, right? Because yeah. generally, like, like my, even my dad's, like, he can get a little bit forgetful even now. Mm. But I'm 33 and I get forgetful. Yeah. So like where where you draw the line. Where do you draw the line? Yeah, between and it was that a level. Bit of yeah, yeah. yeah, so she I had been being forgetful for quite a while before, but it's like, oh, she's probably been stressed out. She's probably not sleeping. Then we've got the stress of COVID. It might be that. Um, but it got to the point where like, we need to get this checked out. Just was because too many, yeah. too, too many, many things flags. happening. Yeah. And um, at that point, they gave her a memory test. Which I will say she absolutely threw, like she just went through it. I think she got one question wrong, wrong and I, even I would have got the question wrong because they asked her to start at 100 and count back um, seven to see how far she could get and she couldn't do it. And I sat there and I thought, well, you know, if you put on the spot, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't 100%. think I could do what, that. What, uh, count back from 100? Yeah, 100. in sevens. In I was sevens? Like, yeah. yeah, I mean. Yeah, and I'm thinking, well, no, I don't think I could do that. So she kind of she passed this with flying colours but they were like we're going to send you an appointment to have a CT scan anyway I'm like right okay so in the August mum goes for a CT scan and at that point I start thinking maybe there's something wrong here I don't know why I don't know why I've sw- I think it was like because I've been deluded a little bit like making all these excuses and we're standing in this hospital and she's toddling off the CT yeah 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 like, and I'm thinking yeah yeah maybe there is something wrong so she had the brain scan, but there's again with COVID, there were months wait for that. So we're like, okay, that's fine. We've had the scan. Our next step is to wait for the results. That's absolutely fine. Let's get on with what's going on in life now, which is the wedding and the build up to Ben's up. That's what we've got to focus on. Everybody's excited. That's what we've got to focus on. But then kind of four weeks before the wedding, I called it off. Did you? Yes. So, yes. What, what, <laughs> why did you call it big, off? Big blow. So, repeated patterns had come up about the drinking Arised had started. From, um, yeah. Your partner? Yeah. What, what sort of... Um, it, was, it was... So, obviously, he still hadn't really... Like, this drinking issue still hadn't really been sorted out 100%. Yeah, and it was it was um, the lies that went with it. I, like, I couldn't cope well with the drink, but it's the lies that I couldn't... What was he lying about drinking, essentially? Yeah, yeah, and just just things like that. And I just think, I just got to the point where I was like, right, okay, I can't do this. I literally can't marry somebody that I can't trust. Mm. I can't do that. Were there any symptoms from the PTSD as well? Or? Um, Yeah. So he, it was like, I, I, he, when he was kind of not drinking... Absolutely fantastic. That, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and then Makes it was sense. like he was something. I, I couldn't even tell if he was a trigger, but it was like all of a sudden the drink could reappear. Right. Yeah, and then it was it was just like this constant looping, and at this point I'm thinking, right, I don't really want to go through with this wedding. Um, I've got Ben's operation weeks away, and. I don't want to be worrying about somebody drinking or kind of if this is even going to work. I'm not fair to do this. So I actually called the wedding off, which was a massive blow for me. But even so, because I'd got Ben's up to think about, yet again, I was at a stage in my life where I can't worry about that now. I've got to to worry about Ben and mum. So yet again... So you I parked still, all of that? I parked all of it. I didn't have time. I mean, yes, I did have big wobbles at that point. You know, I was very embarrassed about the everything. Whole yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, really sure, sh- I'm sure, but knowing that you had other responsibilities at the time, it yeah. was just kind of like, I need to focus on what's really important to me right now. Yeah. And it was obviously your other family as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Ben's operation day arrived. And I can honestly say it's the longest and worst 10 hours of my life. <laughs> Without a shadow of a doubt. Um, it was, again, we were still under COVID rules at this point. You know, so it's all face masks. And it was like 10 hours. Okay, this is really happening. 
And one of the biggest things that I was worried about is because they didn't know how Ben's memory was going to be after the, the operation. And all I kept thinking was, what if he doesn't remember me when he wakes up? I'm sure, yeah, that... Because yeah, they sure couldn't... Yeah, yeah, was. it was just like... I, I but, don't, and, I and did they say there were, what the probability of that happening so was? So Ben, a part of Ben's condition is he's got no short-term memory anyway. He's got fantastic long-term memory, but they wasn't sure how he'd managed to have such a fantastic long-term memory and they couldn't be well, they couldn't be 100% sure where it was located in his brain. Right. So it could have been in that 10% that they took out. And he kept saying to me before, in the morning, before, when he's going down to theatre, he kept saying, you know my 10% of my brain that they're taking out? Do you think they'll put it in a jar for me so they can I can take it home? And I kept saying, but you've already agreed to send it to science, mate. Oh, wow, well, did he? Yeah, yeah. yeah so and yeah, he was like, I know, yeah. but I'd, noble of him. Yeah, it's like, but I'd quite like to... To <laughs> have it in a jar, and I was thinking, well, what are you going to do with it? I just, how do you know? I just want to, just want to keep it. And I was like, well, you've already signed, and you know, I think it is best that we don't have part of the brain in the house. And so we, they put him to sleep, and it was ten hours, and it was so weird because in, even though it was COVID, the surgeon said to me, "Don't sit in this hospital for ten hours. Go a walk around Birmingham. You get out, fresh get air. Out, yeah, yeah, get yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, because you're just going to sit there and yeah. like just." Worry and yeah. think about all the things that could go wrong, right? Yeah. I can all I can remember is walking for ten hours. I don't <laughs> ask me where I went. I can remember vaguely having a coffee because my coach actually texts me saying I'm thinking of you, and I can remember starting crying at that point, having a coffee. So that's all the ten hours I can remember. It was just extremely long, and I went back to the hospital, and it was nine and a half hours altogether. And they came out and they said, "Right, he's in." The danger was because he was under for so long, he could have ended up in intensive care if they couldn't wake him up. He'd have to spend a night in intensive care. And they came out and they said, right, it's, it's gone absolutely amazingly. Um, but can you come into the resource room? Because he is kind of awake, but we need him to wake up more so we can put him back on the ward. So I walked in and the I wasn't prepared for the visual image of him with this big head thing on and you know all wired up and machines bleeping and I can remember thinking right don't cry Amy all you've got to do now is just talk to him and try and wake him up a little bit so I'm like touching him like on his shoulder I'm like Ben you all right mate and the first thing he said to me is have you got my jaw <laughs> and I was oh, like yeah. oh my god well, he's remembered that was it floods yeah. of tears the anaesthetist at the time was looking at me going what is up with this woman and I was like oh he wants his jaw he's got no idea what I'm <laughs> going on about right? mad, yeah. and I'm like it's all right he can remember he can remember and that was it then that had just made my day and I was just like over the moon so everything went successful everything was successful um it's amazing yeah he was on a lot of morphine they the, the day after they were a little bit concerned because their main risk is infection right okay. and he was being sick and he'd had a little bit of an elevated temperature now they they weren't panicking because this is kind of a side effect from having your brain messed around with that your brain's going hang on a minute something's happening here so it starts alerting different parts of your body that something's going on but like we don't think it's an infection but we've got to get his temperature down he recovered from that pretty quickly and on the third day he started to walk even though they thought he wouldn't walk till for 12 months yeah that's incredible that is absolutely yeah. incredible isn't yeah, it yeah it was like he was like sod this i need to get out of bed <laughs> I just need to get out of bed so it was like right okay he's obviously a very like optimistic and like positive <laughs> Stubborn man, as well, stubborn, stubborn, as stubborn well, yeah. awkward. <laughs> yeah. Wanted to prove that. Yeah, prove everybody point. wrong. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so he was actually discharged after seven days. All they needed him to do, like any operation, they needed to go to the toilet and they just needed to see him walk up and downstairs so that he knew that, like, they knew he was safe at home. So seven days later, we're at home, even though he's supposed to be in hospital for six weeks. Wow. At that point, I'm like, really pleased, but absolutely terrified because he's got a massive 
yeah. cut there and I'm thinking I'm I've gone overprotective you got a headache and you, you feel sick do you want anything to eat like what worrying for him yeah and all I kept thinking is I'm glad he's out but he's safer in Birmingham if anything happens you know this is way too early to be like out of hospital so dealing with that was anxiety yeah, 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 yeah do you I'm know sure, what I'm I mean sure, I'm, sure, 100%, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure it was so so but he wanted he was like happy with the idea of just like getting out and he, yeah yeah is this, I mean fair play to the, him the thing is well they kept saying he's going to recover quicker at home really oh that's very interesting because you you are yeah. you know he's going to sleep better and sleep the brain mm. is absolutely amazing the ward was quite nauseous because you've got nurses and doctors running around he's going to recover quicker right okay so th- yeah it does In, make sense yeah and but this was still around the covid times were so there? this was late 2021 20. october 2021 so yes. even they were out and about hospitals were still yeah busy busy yeah, yeah, face masks you know yeah. visiting times are still restricted and things like that so yeah. yeah. It sounded best for him then, really, to be fair, even though, yeah, it was so early yeah. on after yeah. the surgery. Yeah. So how, how did he, um, how did it all go? Oh, I just had, so touch wood. This is wood, right? I'm touching it. <laughs> he's had no seizures since. So wow, that he's, that's incredible. Yeah, so he is still on a lot of medication. They've knocked one off completely. They have to wean, wean him down that slow because they need to trick the brain that nothing's happening. So it has to be weaned off that slowly, but we've successfully got him off one medication. So we've basically halved what medication. And it's one of those things, because I've not seen him off medication since he was seven years old, you don't actually know what the person's actually like until they start coming off medication. Because you've got to think epilepsy medication is... Constantly playing with brain chemicals. A lot of the side effects are it's going to make them t- tired, drowsy, slurring, um, you know, a bit lazy, things 100%, like that. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of them cause depression and, and things like that. So so did he start becoming someone di- different in your opinion? Or? Yeah, massively more confident. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, he'd always been quite shy. So if we was ever out, like if a stranger spoke to him, directly to Ben he'd look at me straight away for an answer now if he met you we'd answer you directly and look straight at you um so confidence is talking is bubblier is kind of looking towards the future now so I'm interested to see what he's like when he's come off all the medication because if you think it just calms your brain down completely oh, yeah yeah I, that, that makes a it, it can numb you be a bit numbing as well yeah was the dad around um um so yes so we did um he was quite supportive yeah yeah um so it was i wouldn't say it was fully joint but he stepped in when he needed to fair enough um so yeah that was all good um and you still had your business at this point i still have my business at this point um so luckily i got friends that stepped in while ben was in hospital and that was great because i was like well i might be away for six weeks here Hmm. you know that's a big ask um luckily I wasn't away for that long so yeah everything was going well obviously I'd still not dealt with the feelings of cancelling the wedding but you know it was fine yeah everything was doing fine um and then Christmas come around and kind of, mum behaved very oddly that Christmas yeah so of, we're still not course. got the brain scan yeah. results from here and, and she's still sh- showing signs of symptoms. Sim- and... Symptoms that got ma- that kind of massively took hold over Christmas. Like the mood, she wasn't sleeping, talking very oddly. And it was like, right, okay, there is something wrong here. So the, mood weren't, sh- uh, the moods weren't just no, a normal... No, 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 that wasn't a phase. Um, so luckily we got the appointment for the results in the January... And they were like, right, we've got, we've got your results. So we toddled off to the hospital and I can remember the consultant saying, we're sorry to say that you're showing early signs of Alzheimer's. My heart dropped and I don't think mum realised what they'd said because she said, oh, lovely. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Is that what she said? Great. And I'm thinking, oh, bless her. Oh, okay, right, okay. So I'll, we walked out the hospital and I'm thinking, don't actually know what I'm doing right now. I've not got any experience with this not quite sure 
you know so, what's so, happening. So your mum was like, your mum was like, oh great, is that what? You yeah, know, yeah, she was, she was. She was like, oh lovely, yeah. And because uh, Alzheimer's is like, uh, you, you start losing your memory, didn't you? We well, see. That's what I, I've got no experience of Alzheimer's, and you hear about people saying it, and you think it is memory loss, but when you start looking into it, it's so much more than memory loss. Is it really? Yeah, which right. you explain the moods and things. But what made it kind so, so, of... So, so did she just not actually process what had been sent? Is it said? Is that no, it was just like no, she, she just swiped it? She and she just swiped like, oh, great it. news. I'm, yeah, I'm fine. great news. So it was very strange because seven o'clock that night, the consultant actually rang me, and I'm like, okay. And she's like, I just thought I'd ring you because if we ran the brain scan now, I think it showed that she's much further on in her Alzheimer's journey. And we're going to get in contact with the Alzheimer's Society and we're going to put you in touch with this person and this person. I'm like, right, okay. And at the end of the conversation, she says, have you got a lot of support? Because this will end a life. I'm like, okay. Have you got a lot of support? Yes, have you? Have like you people got, around you. you and, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And I was like, that's kind of like, when it kind of hit me, I'm thinking... I haven't got, you know, I've I've gone through Ben's operation. I didn't know what I was doing, but I'd got an amazing team of medics around me that go, that said, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, then this is going to happen. And all of a sudden, I'd found myself, like, responsible for my mum because I was the only family member with not a clue of, of what I was doing. So no cousins, no brothers and sisters? So I've got a brother that he struggles with schizophrenia anyway, so he doesn't really get involved. Um, we're a very small family, so it's not like we've got people to call on. And what happened to your dad? Um, so my dad, so their, so my stepdad passed away. That right. was the one, yeah. Right, in, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 so he passed away, so like mum was isolated. Right, okay. Um, so it was just a little bit like, mm, okay, we've got a different journey now. And that that's... Out of everything that happened, I think that's the one that scared me the most. Because the way you talk, like you, you, um, you're kind of like quite calm. You've you've sh shown me you're quite calm about the situation mm. when all of these things were happening. Like some people were going to turmoil. Um, yeah. When these things are happening, but you're obviously yeah. quite resilient. Resilient yes. person, I'd unless been, you I'd, put on a good face. That I, I'd been resilient, but that so that was January 2022. But January. Not a lot happened in January 2022, as, as in no kind of horrible events like the other years, which I was grateful for. But 2022 gave me time to reflect. And that's probably where the more problems showed up when I had the time. For yourself? For myself. Yeah, yeah. So you started, yeah. like, started yeah. processing things and, yeah, and yeah. it wasn't necessarily about everyone else anymore. It was yeah. probably more about you for a change. Yeah, I literally got to a point. Um, so I actually decided to close the high street shop in July when it was evident that mum needed more care and that mum wasn't going to get better. And I think that's why I struggled a little bit because with Ben's kind of operation... They were doing that for him to be better where mum had got a diagnosis where there was no better yeah. and it was going to get worse. And, and there's no cure for anything. And there's no like, cure for yeah. that. So I think that's why I struggled so much. So I closed the high street shop down. So again, that gave me more time to think, oh my God, what has happened over the last few years? Yeah, because it's almost like you had all of this, don't want to it's not maybe the right terminology, but clutter around you where yeah. once you start freeing up all that space, space it's, like, it's like, oh that's, my God. Yeah, and there was like times where I'm just like, have I been somebody really bad in the past or something or somebody got a voodoo doll or, and I got into the mindset of being quite fearful of going, what's going to go wrong next? Yeah, a hundred percent. And it was so weird because I'd never been like that. Um, and I think that's... You had, you had to be strong for other people, didn't you? And, mm. and then all of a sudden, like, certain people's... 
you know, were, were kind of on their next chapters, mm. but you know, you, you probably had a lot to process mentally. Yeah. Yeah. And I can imagine you feeling like you had some sort of negative. Yeah. I, I had, th- yeah. Like, thing happening oh, yeah. Toward, yeah, in life. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what kind of happened, what your life was like before you had. Pretty then. stable. Was it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah pretty stable. It, it just, you do get in that mindset, which I'd never been in before. It was, I went into complete victim mode if I'm being honest. Yeah. 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 I'm sure. Um, it, I'm sure I'd gone from being quite confident to losing a lot of confidence. I'd gone from being able to go, right, this has happened, so what's my next step? To going, I have no idea what my next step is. So, so and you weren't with your, um, you weren't with anyone at this time. So, me and Paul had got back together and we're trying to work it out, which was very odd because, so what I was doing, I was learning how to cope with mum and kind of, how to process it because that's like a grieving thing as well because it was like okay my mum's still here but she's she's not, not going to be the same my person mom. yeah she's not the same person so I got that and then I got this relationship where I'm trying to rebuild it where I'm like I love you but I don't want you to come over and hear me because you're going to hurt me and I'd gone from being able to set big goals like opening a business Shooting doing that stars, yeah. yeah to fit to death of, of setting a goal yeah and, and limiting I, beliefs. Limiting beliefs, and I got into the mindset of, I don't because everything's going wrong. And what I did was I made my world smaller. So I was still posting business stuff, but I wasn't posting anything about my personal stuff. I wasn't going um, meeting friends for coffee as much as I used to. The peer group, my coaching group, I wasn't engaging with them so much. And even though I was setting goals... It was goals I could have done with my eyes shut. Yeah, yeah. It was a daily thing. You just became very withdrawn. Yeah, and, very withdrawn. And um, and Ben was on like a good part uh, path good at this path, point. Yeah, so I was able yeah. to keep it together and kind of fake it till you make it where Ben was concerned because what I didn't want him to think was, okay, mum's having a wobble, I need to worry about her. Mm. You know, he was coming off his meds. The last thing I wanted him to do was worry. Yeah, 100%. Because yeah. that, you know, stress can cause seizures. So I'm like, everything's fine. But in the background, you know, and Everything I had to wasn't be, fine. yeah, I had to be good for mum as well because she's a warrior mm. at best. The last thing that I needed her to do was worrying about me. But I'd like, I could feel it was like weird. It's like all of a sudden, I'm all I kept saying to myself is, I just want a simple life. And I kept saying it again and again and again. And somebody asked me, what does a simple life look like? And all I could answer was, and where nothing goes wrong. Yeah. Like, I am 42 years old now, and it feels like my picture of what reality should be like is not anywhere near what reality actually is. Yeah. And, the, yeah. The, 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 the problem that you've got is, is that for, for lots of us anyway, life isn't, life isn't easy at all. Like, I yeah. think it's about probably being strong enough to endure yeah. what, what life throws at us and yeah. and you can very easily fall into a victim mindset of feeling sorry about for yeah. yourself yeah. rather than kind of like yeah. pull your socks up and yeah. get get on with it and yeah. and generally actually your problems become different problems by actually f- moving forward and trying to yeah. deal yeah. with them rather yeah. than yeah. Otherwise, you get stuck in that procrastination, that yeah. kind of, yeah. and it can be a slippery slope. It can, you know, you can spiral down further down that rabbit hole where yeah, you can actually start self sabotaging. And, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think my self sabotage massively was just the lack of confidence and the self doubting. Mm. I'd done all these amazing things in the past, like I'd set up a business, I'd learned to drive at 40, I'd got over a water phobia. Um, in 2021 and learned to swim but that had all gone I couldn't think of that I was only thinking about oh look at everything that's gone wrong yeah you almost like lost the will I kind of lost I was like literally looking out for the next danger of something that would go wrong I was like I was on the lookout for so uh, what what was a water phobia so I had a water so I've not been able to swim Right, at all. right, at all. At all. Mum, mum didn't add a water phobia, and it seemed to, I seemed to have took it on board. And oh, okay, ca- so your mum had it as well. Yeah, right. yeah. So it was just, I got into a, a thing of, right, what 
can I, what do I find challenging? What am I scared of? Mm. You know, what can I do to get out of my comfort zone? So one was learning to drive. Okay, fair play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 40 yeah, yeah. years old, yeah. I'm yeah. like, yeah, no, okay. It's time yeah, to start, yeah. is it? And secondly was learning to swim. But it's actually my coach's fault at the time because he got me in the North Sea to do this Wim Hof breathing thing. What, Paul? The Paul Paul, Paul, Paul yeah. He? he was like, well, we've got a meeting up at South Shields and you've got to get in the water. And I was going, I can't do it. And he was like, why? Is because I've got a phobia, but why have you? And I was like, well, I don't know why, you know. And he's like, well, you need to go because we're doing this Wim Hof breathing. And I'm like, great. Because normally, um, like these phobias or they're they're kind of like some sort of traumatic moment that happened to somebody at some point. Yeah, I th- I then... think yeah, I think it was my mum was the trauma with the water <laughs> just yeah, come from really, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah interesting. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I'd done that. But when you were on negative like, thinking and you're worried about everything going wrong, you forget of everything that's gone right. Yeah, yeah. I think we're very quick to see the negatives, though, in life than we I, yeah, are yeah. to look at all of the positives that we have. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, a, it's a very easy for all. Of, I think we take life for granted, if I'm honest with you. Like, we, we have these issues on a day to day basis that we make them sound a lot bigger than what they actually are yeah. but to us they're relatable like yeah because they're impacting us it feels like yeah well that's not... the thing because because of ben, ben's condition i'd learned that all that time to be grateful you yeah. know what i mean yeah. so it's, it's, it's interesting how you were so practical yeah when there was the most serious issue you could ever kind of have have in your yeah. life and then all of a sudden you, you didn't have any drama well, you didn't have any drama <laughs> obviously you had your mum yeah but, but yeah and then all of a sudden it was like the mindset yeah. the shifted, mindset yeah yeah which was quite interesting and and it was a, it was I can always remember it I can always remember the the minute of where I realised that it just gone wrong my mindset had just like I'd kind of lost what I had and I didn't feel myself and we'd been to um, so the Alzheimer's Society run a memory cafe once a month where people go along to take the carers and the charity workers are there and they're there to give you information. And I'd walked in, I felt fine, I'd slept fine, I felt good. But this lady from the Alzheimer's Society said, Amy, are you all right? And in that split second, I don't know what went on, but I just burst out crying. He just like had too much in the in yeah. the end and yeah. you probably needed some help yourself yeah. at this point. And when she asked me what was wrong, all I kept saying is, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what the next step is for mum. I don't know what I'm doing in my relationship. I don't know what I'm doing in my business. I've got no idea what I'm doing. And it was like, even though I was so embarrassed because I'm not the kind of person to have a meltdown in public, but at the, t- at the time, like I can look back now and thank, thank God I had that meltdown when I did. Because I literally went home and I went, Right, something's got to change. And I realised massively, one, that my self-care had gone out the window, not possibly for that year, but for a couple of years running. I'd kind of literally put everybody before me. 100%, yeah. And then collapsing in bed at night and getting up the next day and doing the same thing yeah. again. But it's, it's, don't you think it's, um, it's quite interesting how when you're looking after other people, you can go... It's, it's, it's easier when you're looking after other people, but then when it comes to looking after yourself... It's, you feel guilty. You yeah, know what? Yeah, 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 there is a guilt. Yeah, yeah there yeah. is. Gen- generally, yeah. there is, because it, it's um, it's almost like you're being selfish, but it's, then... Yeah, yeah. But then it's the other issue that you've got is that you can't pour from an empty cup, and That's and if it. you're just running on fumes for years or months, yeah. whatever it is, yeah. sooner or later, yeah. you know, something's going to start breaking down. Yeah. And that yeah. was obviously what happened um, yeah. to yourself. And it was probably quite lucky that you had some good people around you yeah. that, that came to your aid for a change yes. rather than... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I'm sure we all need it. Oh, massively. Yeah. yeah. Massively, because I think, you know, when something happens in life, and I think what I'd done, you know, when I kept saying I want the simple life, I had to change that massively and sit there and go, do you know what, life's not simple and nor is it supposed to be. Mm. Like, if you're continuing to go and sit here and go, I want a simple life you're deluded because what you've actually done is made your world that small and give yourself a lot of time to dwell on everything that's happened and life's not linear and you can't sit and wait for the next thing to go wrong because something will come 
now you've got to give yourself enough self-care to be able to be in a better state to deal with whatever comes and that's the thing because state of mind is state of mind is massive yeah yeah it's absolutely massive and fortunately like i've been in a great position that i never look a, a bad thing with ben being diagnosed because for 18 years he's shown me that anything is possible you know if you've got the right mindset it's got an amazing mindset and you can do whatever you put your mind to and not only that i've been surrounded by neurologists neuroscientists brain surgeons epilepsy doctors that are all kind of all backed by mindset like the amount of times when they kept saying to ben the best thing you can do for yourself mate is to be confident like i've had 18 years of being around people medical people going you need to look after your mindset yeah i mean to be honest what was quite interesting is that you was um you was helping ben a lot with his own path Mm. and it was almost like a a point where you needed actually to start sorting out your own path as well yeah yeah Um, so it was quite um although you walked with ben on that journey it was like now you it was your turn yeah. And and it's yeah, I but think looking within is quite chal- challenging for yeah. a lot of people. I was about to say we're great at giving advice, but nine times out of ten you can sit there and you think, Well, I'm not I'm not doing that. Mm. And it's like I'd all the time I'd been saying to Ben, Don't ever say you can't do anything. Like, let's see what can happen and all of a sudden, twenty twenty two I'm going, I can't do that. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'd literally it affected you uh, mm. more than it did him in the end. Yeah, yeah. Like I can't do that. So that was a massive turning point for me. Um, and I do believe you have to hit kind of the bottom to come up. A hundred percent. Adversity is like, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> it's like a blessing and a curse all yeah. at the same time. So Yeah, I think it has, you have to have a wake up call. And when you feel really uncomfortable with kind of how your mindset, how your life's ended up, what your mindset, what you're doing on a daily, like you have to feel really uncomfortable for that to get to a point of going, do you know what, I've had enough of this. Yeah, 100%. And yeah, yeah. So, so what, what did you do to try and help yourself? So the self-care was the, the big thing. The second thing of what I found massively helped me, which is what I teach people about now, is I'm not a big believer in going to past events where you feel crap. However, I had to go back to various points in my life, look at things, because what was happening is I'd still got problems with the wedding to the point where if somebody brought a wedding up, I'd have a meltdown. Really, yeah, yeah. Right, so it was still affecting me. So I had to go back there and find as many reasons that I could be grateful that that wedding didn't happen. Hmm. Like with Ben's operation... How many reasons could I be for Ben having that operation? When you said you used to go back there, like, did you go get help or did you go to therapy? Um, No, so I was continuing to work with Paul Moore. (laughs) um, And I quickly learned massively, you can't let anything go that you're not grateful for. Mm. And it's really hard. You know, if you've been through something that's kind of difficult to process... Yeah. yeah, the last thing you want to do is go and sit there and go, well, this has happened and I'm grateful for this and this has happened so I'm grateful that happened. It's quite hard. And when I talk about this to people, I don't, I kind of need to clarify this. I, I don't ever look back and go, yeah, I'm really grateful that I cancelled my wedding or my stepdad died. But being grateful from things that have come from it, I'm now not triggered yeah by yeah. things it's like it's more neutralized it rather than i'm not grateful for mm. it of course i wouldn't like all these things to happen again i'm not that grateful yeah but i can now look back and it's like neutral uh how about being grateful for the fact that you was wise enough to know that something wasn't right when it was exactly and it, exactly and it kind of goes to that that saying about a glass half full half empty mm. like you can look at it in two different angles. Exactly, perspective. But it is perspective, yeah. And yeah. It, like, it's, that's everything. And like, gra- you... gratitude puts you on a different yeah. state of mind anyway, like yeah. a more humbling place. Cause Absolutely. I think um, when we're in that kind of negative place, we're just taking it all for granted again. We're all kind of thinking, oh, like, and it could be like always a lot worse. And like, you know, what through, like what Ben went through or what your mum went through. So, but everyone's got these kind of traumas that, 
affect them and then you've got to kind of reprocess that. Yeah. It's yeah. like... Yeah, otherwise you'll just carry on carrying it. Yeah, it's like and heavy baggage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's like I had to go and do this because, you know, friends are getting married. There's wedding... People do it every day. And if I couldn't have a melt time, everybody said, oh, I'm getting married. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I had to get over that. And there was other things, you know, and finding kind of... And it sounds awful, that's why I had to clarify, but finding things about being mum being diagnosed with Alzheimer's, finding grateful things like with that and the lessons that I've learned from it. And like I say, it sounds hard work, but I truly believe that going back there mm. and just finding lessons that you've learned from something, being grateful for it, it just helps you reframe it so much. Yeah. And yeah. I spent the last part of 2022 Deal, just changing perceptions, building my confidence back up again, getting myself out there, you know, learning to, to go, do you know what? Life's not going to be great all the time. Mm. Things will go wrong, but I'll be okay. You know, whatever goes wrong, I know I will be okay. I'm ready to uh, yeah. face head on. Yeah, so I'm not like going out there looking for no, events no, no, or anything no. like that, but, but it's, it's having it's the good. confidence yeah. just to say... It, that's really important. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You can't be scared to like face your, yeah. your problems, otherwise you you don't end up dealing with anything. Yeah. That's exactly, the, exactly. And yeah. then you end up worse because you end up with lower self-esteem. Yeah, low 100%. confidence. You know, cutting yourself off. You hide, so away, hide away hide from away, it all. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, so you you're now getting yourself into um, a lot better of a headspace, and yes. then this is when the, the life coach yeah, comes yes. into it. <laughs> yes, and so uh, if I was to put all the pieces together, it sounds like you know you've gone through all your hardships, um, and you want to help other people. Yeah, absolutely. And they say when you're helping other people with in life, it's almost a way of you healing yourself at the yeah. same yeah. time. And yeah, I see that with people in all different aspects mm. of their lives not just obviously being a life coach but um is am I kind of is that is that right or yes so I've I've kind of I'm I'm quite niche in the sense that I love obviously neuroscience because <laughs> of Ben's condition I've been surrounded by people all his life talking about brains and things like that so I'm actually um, working towards being a brain coach now, which is neuroscience, which based with mindset. Right, okay. So instead of um, me going to you, right, I need you to write a happy list of everything that you can do to take your mind off being anxious, I can now tell you the science behind why I get my ladies in my, my group, why I need you to do that, because this is the science and this is what's happening in your brain. Because I'm... And this is what you can do this, about it. Yeah, absolutely. And this is why this is happening. And you just need to be self-aware and teaching people to become self-aware, you know, of what your thoughts are actually doing because to your brain. It's, uh, it's so interesting about this awareness thing. Like, I don't think... Because I, I, I definitely think I've done it for a long time. And I also think I've also been really conscious, but... I feel like a lot of people are walking around so blind. An autopilot. Yeah, and they really don't even know it. Yeah. And like they just let life happen to them rather yeah. than for them. Yeah. Like so, yeah. you know, it's 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 almost a little bit like this matrix type. Yeah. So they, thing. so science actually found out that ninety five percent of your day is gonna be the same as you did yesterday. You're just on default, yeah. like autopilot last week, like last you call year. it. Yeah. Like and you are just thinking it's a Eat, normal sleep, thing. work and repeat sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, you are going to think the same thoughts as you did yesterday as well. Mm. And, and so making people aware of it and then they are more aware of how they can change their behaviour. So whether they're stuck in a rut, whether something's happened to them and they're feeling a bit anxious, like I say, this life plan's not gone the way they wanted, feeling a bit deflated, a bit stuck. I'm able to come in and go, right, okay, we're going to look at it this way. Because feeling like this is doing this in your brain and we can your thoughts are triggering mm. your behaviour and your actions and things like that. So let's go back and change the thoughts about it. Yeah, yeah. And let's see, because you can't expect to do the same thing every day and get different results, so let's try a different way. So, so what's your plan with, like, the life coach? Is it, like... Because you work, like, with Paul Moore and... Yes. And Paul Moore has masterminds and you said, like, you... Yeah. You said to me um, out maybe outside the room about how you 
attend these kind of seminars with like yeah. 200 people and stuff like this yeah. is that the sort of pathway you want to go down or I'd, is it something a bit more intimate so I'd, i i i don't know i've got a bit of fear yeah, about still, getting still, too big yeah, yeah still <laughs> um, working so it out. at the minute because it's been one of those things that i didn't ever have a plan into going to life coaching not one no and no, it wasn't until enough. ben said to me like my son is like you need to do this like you just come out with it on a daily like it just flows out of your mouth and you just i ask you a question it's there straight away you've got the answer and I was like, okay, let's just run with this. Let's see where it goes. And thankfully, it's going really well. Um, so I've, I'm on Instagram, but I've also got a free um, Facebook group where I drop mindset trainings in there on a Monday. Oh, nice, nice. And then I've got a four-week uh, program as well where the ladies come on and we work on like changing how you feel instantly, like managing habits, your energy, goal-setting, and it's, and it's like a community with all you guys yes, in it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And it's great because it's a group where everybody's seen each other do well. Yeah. And, and kind of like uh, praising each other yeah, and celebrating each other's yeah. wins. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's really nice. And um, so you, you, you're not doing the sewing business anymore. So I still do. Um, so I design embroidery kits. Okay. So that's a hobby of mine. So it's one of them things where... I just, I'm doing it anyway. Um, so we do do shows and I still go around teaching people. I say, <laughs> because I love it. I absolutely Good. love it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's really important like, yeah. to have a passion in anything. Yeah, like. I, I just think I, my passion is teaching people new things. Right, okay. So that ties in with the mindset coaching. So I'm teaching just people how to think differently and so in I'm teaching you new new skill, a new hobby. So I just like sharing information. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. that's brilliant though. Yeah, I think it's really important to share, to be honest yes, with you. Like, yeah. We should all be able to help each other grow in different ways. So yeah, yeah. it's nice to see that you like, you've, you're kind of carrying that as a responsibility and you enjoy yes. doing it in the yeah. process. Yeah. And, um, and how is Ben as well at this uh, point in time? Oh, he's doing amazingly well. So he's, um, like I say, he's got more confidence. So um, he's started boxing <laughs> and MMA. Um, got his first belt in jiu-jitsu. Oh, wow, yes. wow. Taking so, it very seriously. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's all goal-driven, uh, which is, like I say, it's it's good to see him like that because we don't know what he's going to be like when he's off. Yeah, it's a completely <laughs> different person, isn't he? Yes, so, yeah. Is, is he off all the medication now or is he... No, so he's still on some of it. Okay. So he's, a continuous, he's got about 12 months left of being oh, wow. weaned off. Wow, altogether. so nearly, n- nearly... Yeah. Oh, well... My, yeah. my fingers and toes are crossed yes for, for thank ben. you <laughs> and, and for yourself of course as well because yes. you've had a incredible life and so far anyway you're obviously still young and you've got yes. loads of years ahead of you um and I, I i wish you the very best thank you. on your journey so thank you for coming here today amy thank you I really appreciate me. it yeah. i really enjoyed that conversation yeah and um i look forward to catching up with you and seeing how you're getting on in the future yeah, perfect <laughs> thank you thank you